Hey, good morning to you. Happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you an update on the tropics, on what's going on with everything. Plus, I see a new tropical pattern that will be coming in very shortly. So, as we get right into the meat of it, you can see Invest 95L. It is moving at 6 miles per hour to the west. It is 1,013 millibars, and the maximum sustained winds are 34 miles per hour and it is starting to make its motion towards texas now this is going to bring you all that very extreme flooding later tonight into the early morning hours for tomorrow and i'm still showing it's going to be very extreme we're still talking anywhere from four to eight inches within a 24-hour period and it is going to be somewhere around the coast of texas and now it's stretching all the way into western louisiana as well so you can also see we also have Heavy rainfall coming in. We do have a mesoscale discussion about this, what's moving over southern Mississippi at the moment. And that wave could still strengthen to a possible tropical depression before landfall for a short time, which really don't make much of a difference towards the impacts. It's still bringing a lot of rainfall. It's not going to be no update with the winds. But as we look towards the full tropics and see what we have, look at this new line that popped up on WSV3 this morning. And this is usually a track line of a storm. So why this popped up this morning, little unknown guys. But as we take a look, we have the one that's in the Pacific. That is wave number one. It is still an Invest 94E. We have the one wave that did go into the Western Caribbean. And now it's over Central America and going over Mexico, bringing precipitation, dying off. We still have PTC2 right here that still is going to form up after it gets off land. You can see most of the convection is over here in the water. A lot of it over land is getting ripped apart right now. But once it gets off land, it will become a tropical depression, a tropical storm as it moves closer toward Nicaragua. You still have the hurricane watch out and the tropical storm warnings in the blue. And it is still expected to intensify after it leaves y'all back to a Cat 1 hurricane. That's still showing true. Also what we have, we have the next two waves. These two waves right here are still going to meet up together and become this disturbance right here over the Northern Caribbean islands, over the Leeward Islands, and it's still projected to take a westward path. Now it's still showing it could go this way like we've been seeing, and a piece of energy can still come this way and maybe do a late formation down the road. So we will keep our eye on that. But another thing that's happening is that next wave coming off is not showing a lot of potential. The convection went down. It's getting smothered by a lot of dust. Matter of fact, I'm showing we're about to go into a new pattern, guys. And just that quick, the guidance line has disappeared. So whatever that was that popped up for a brief moment, we may never know. It could be what's to come because there is something showing it could come in later on. Now, the latest information from National Hurricane Center from their flight Shows a lot of 20 uh, miles per hour winds in this system. The highest is getting up to 30 towards the center of it on the east side, of course. But it's not showing anything past 30. And it does weaken back down into the 20s. Now, the pattern we're about to go into is about to change things. So we're about to get some dust, but the dust is going to clear away. And right now, what we have is this big Azores high right here. And what that does is contribute everything to spin around in this direction. But also as it relaxes back to the east, northeast, it can also spin it around in this, in this direction while it retracts back. But what's about to change is this high pressure that's over the Azores High, the Bermuda High, is about to make a southern path. And that is going to steer everything right into our Caribbean and make it to where when everything starts coming off the MDR, it is going to start pointing towards the U.S. more. So let's get into the update. Help share the information. Hit the like button. Support the video. Thank you so much. And make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. The most important part is hit that bell. Because even if you're subscribed, you will not get notified when my videos come out. And if you haven't watched in a while, YouTube unchecks that bell. So you got to stay up to date as well on your end. Now, as of 8 o'clock this morning, Invest 95L is still at 40%. But the disturbance is forecast to turn northward and move slowly inland over southeastern Texas later today. Slow development of the system is possible while the low remains over water, and it could still become a short-lived tropical depression before it moves inland. 
However, heavy rain will be possible along portions of the Texas coast for the next two days. Plus, you have another Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter plane that is scheduled to investigate the disturbance later this afternoon. Plus, we still have disturbance two over here that has gone down to 10%. Remember, this was always predicted to weaken up, and the second wave is going to merge with that to give it its strength for our next potential system, which is still showing a lot of ifs, maybes, and maybe nots. And we still have the PTC2, which is going down to 20 miles per hour winds now. It's really getting torn up over land. Now, remember, all these links are in the description, so you can go read up on it and keep yourself up to date. Now, as you look at the tropical waves, you can see that a pair of tropical waves are in the western Atlantic. However, these two waves are forecast to merge late today and move over the Lesser Antilles and the Eastern Caribbean Friday and Saturday. And that will be our next invest. And you can see right here on your update on the PTC2 that you still have tropical storm warnings in this blue, tropical storm watches in this yellow, and you still have that hurricane watch along the coast of Nicaragua because it's still expected to be in the high 60s as it passes by. Not a hurricane, and it could be even a possibility for a very short lived, but 60 to 70 miles per hour winds does not really make much of a difference. It's going to be around the same impacts. So just be aware of possible mudslides and some high winds for a short time. But it is still predicted to still strengthen up to a hurricane by next Tuesday out into the Pacific. Now with the latest information that I see, I don't think a update is warranted this afternoon because what's going to happen is going to be later tonight into the early morning hours for all this flooding that's going on. Then the system is just going to weaken down and you're just going to have severe storms bringing rainfall so the invest would go away. But as of right now, PTC2, within the next 36 hours, will still be a tropical storm. It'd be 55 knot winds, so somewhere around 60 to low 60 miles per hour winds as it weakens down over landfall and then strengthens back up as it goes into the Pacific. Maybe a high-end tropical storm, maybe a low-end hurricane. It's still 50-50 on that, but still affecting nobody after that. As well as Invest 95L, I will check for any further updates. But the latest intensity guidance takes where more than likely it will become a tropical depression. It all depends if it gets a center of location. And there is showing, of course, the ship that it could be a tropical storm. And so we'll take that with a grain of salt. It shows also a hurricane later. But there is another ensemble that is agreeing a little bit to where it could maybe strengthen up right before landfall and become a low-end tropical storm. More than likely, they're showing that it will be a tropical depression it will not be a re-strengthening. It could reform up. Still won't make a difference. It's still bringing the rainfall. It'd be the same impacts. So remember, I do have this link in the description for all of you in the south. Got it on high resolution right for refresh on the 24 and the 48 hours. Because for the next 24 hours, it's not going to be a lot of rainfall. Maybe an inch and a half for Houston. But within a 24-hour period, it's going to be a dramatic amount of rainfall that's going to come in on y'all. And it is going along the coast of Texas, and now it's starting to go towards Lake Charles with almost four inches or more on the southwest side of Louisiana. So it is still showing anywhere from four to eight inches still coming with this storm within a 24-hour period. So it will be extreme flooding still. It's not going all the way up towards Houston with the heaviness of the flooding. Now, Houston is our fourth largest city in our country. That's why I mentioned Houston a lot. But you can see how all the heaviness is all the way from Bay City, Lake Jackson, Galveston, all across to Beaumont. And it goes all the way towards Lake Charles with Cameron also getting over a possible six, seven inches. So I'll leave this link for you. Please use it. Please zoom in as you need and see your area and see exactly what the heavy rainfall is expected. This is according to high resolution and rapid refresh, the best high resolution model that we have. But your flooding is still going to last multiple days. So as you see, the monsoon season is still bringing marginal flash flooding and all this green. And now from Texas all the way to the southern South Carolina, all of y'all are in the marginal for flash flooding as this precipitation trains to the southeast. And now you have a slight risk right here for southern Texas for today. For tomorrow, is going to grow to a bigger slight risk all the way towards Louisiana by Lake Charles, for all this heavy flooding. Then as you go into Saturday, it's going to shift a little further. You still got the remnants. You still got flash flooding in the marginal. As well as that system moving through the central U.S. will move across to Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio Valley. And there is a marginal all the way to the northeast 
for flash flooding for Saturday. So when you check your cyclone location possibilities for this morning and you see that GFS is added again, just like the 18Z yesterday, it showed him something could stir up late in the Western Caribbean and go towards the Western Gulf of Mexico. It showed it again on the 0Z run. But you can see here in the update that it has disappeared. That's because of this new tropical pattern that we're about to come into. Also, the Euro agrees. Everything's going to the West. UK Met to the West. KMA to the West. Even the Canadian, everything's to the West. But it's still showing in a cyclone location somewhere around the 5th that it still might form up. We still got some lift on the Western Caribbean before this high pressure expands. And it still could go somewhere into the Gulf as well as that other piece of energy could form up right by Southern Florida and go into the Gulf as well. So it's still showing that as a possibility according to the GFS. You can even see with the SpaghettiO models from the Euro that after that system goes by Nicaragua that we have nothing coming through. It's not even showing that potential for Florida no more. It's showing maybe something all the way to the Western Gulf of Mexico could form up something weak, very weak at the very end. That's it. After that, we are on this tropical break because of this new pattern that we're going into. So as we look with the update with our potential velocity anomaly with our rising air and sinking air, you see we do have this plume of dust that is going to be moving through for the next few days. But then we have this next possibility from these two waves forming together that we have coming all the way to the 9th and maybe the 10th. Then we have some more dust coming through. And it's going to be more than just dust that's going to be making this pattern because the dust is going to go away eventually and this high pressure is going to guide everything into our Caribbean. And you can see this shot best right here. So what you have is your Azores, your Bermuda High. And as it's in this motion, which is what it's in right now, this is the most likely tracks of tropical cyclones as it comes off the MDR. Now, as this expands out and stretches further south, further to the southwest, it will direct these systems right into our Caribbean. And best chance for us to get a Gulf storm is when that stretches out. And that's about to happen. And you can see this both on a Euro and the GFS. So as you look with the Euro, you can see the system that we have going towards Nicaragua. The next wave coming up and our big Azores high pressure. And as you keep going, you see it is still a weak system for Nicaragua while it goes through and will strengthen up towards a hurricane that's agreed on both models. As that next wave comes into our Caribbean, dissipates, don't really strengthen up to much as it goes through the Gulf of Mexico. There's going to be a lot of lift in our area around July 6, but it's not able to form up to anything. But you can also see with our Azores high pressure that as we go through the next 10 days that it starts stretching out and starts becoming more like a Bermuda high. And when it does that, it will block everything that comes in off the MDR. It will be putting a lot of sinking air. But what does make it out after that, because the sinking air will eventually go away, that it will make it off the MDR and go straight into our Caribbean being guided by this line right here. So instead of way up here, it's going to be a little further southern with that high pressure. And that's going to guide the storms further into the Caribbean as soon as we go into that phase. Also, you can see it with the GFS as the two systems come in. Also still agreeing that that will be a hurricane that's going across Nicaragua after it goes into the Pacific. But you can also see with the Azores high that it stretches all the way out. It becomes a big high pressure a strengthening high pressure right around July 7th and just reaches way down. And now you have whatever comes off the MDR will be getting guided this way into our Caribbean because the high pressure is lower now instead of further away. So the GFS and the Euro both sees that high pressure coming down. At the same time, both systems see that we're about to be on a break because this will be more sinking air coming into our MDR. So if something does come off of there after this starts relaxing back because it's going to be too strong, it could make it into our Caribbean and be a straight path. Until then, there will be like a block going on. And you can see from the update on the NASA satellite that as we keep on going, that next wave that passes through does eventually break off and it goes towards Florida and it stays weak. It can't get a upper level low. It tries right around July 5th, right above Cuba, 
but it don't hold it that long at all. It just gets tore apart, elongated out, and just gets shredded by the Azores high. So that will not be any kind of formation. I know that GFS sees some late formation, and Euro was seeing late formations possible as well. And there is a chance for an upper level low to come in. It could form up an upper level low and do something around July 6th, but it's not showing a lot of confidence or good possibilities. And the wave after that, you can see that from the whole basin, that around the 6th or 7th is going to come by, getting suppressed a little further south because you got all this dust on top of it. But it starts getting some precipitation around it around the 9th by the Eastern Caribbean, and it makes a little bit more of a northern pattern. Now, this will go around this high pressure and circle out, but if this starts stretching down a little bit early with a new tropical high pressure coming down, that this could go a little further and be directed straight into our Caribbean. I will stay updated on this, but it is showing so far it will be blocked by a lot of high pressure from all this thick dust. And that is the latest tropical update, guys. I just want to let you know about this new tropical pattern that is coming. Plus, you still have this very heavy rainfall still coming your way, and that could bring a lot of power outages as well. Just be careful. God bless every single one of you. I hope you have a very blessed day today. Now, today I want to read to you a little spirit of our Lord. Amen. Let's praise our God every day. Amen. And today is Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Have a very blessed day, everybody. I'll see y'all first thing tomorrow morning. Please be careful when all that rainfall coming. That could be pretty bad. Thank you again for visiting my channel today. God bless every single one of you. In all glory. <laughs> all power. All honor. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Our Father. forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great Thursday, everybody.